Good evening and welcome to Pray Vote Stand. I'm your host, Tony Perkins, President of the Family Research Council. Tonight, surviving the rainbow onslaught. When you can't turn on the television, shop for cereal, or scroll through Facebook without being hit over the head with LGBT pride, how should Christians respond? Thanks to woke corporate America and the most radical administration in history, there's no escaping the left's forced sexual revolution. What does the Bible say about confronting the culture's re rebellion? We'll talk to Dr. Wayne Grudem about how we went from live and let live to affirm or be punished. How would Jesus respond to Pride Month? He'll tell us from Scripture. And for parents who are desperately trying to navigate this month-long landmine, Sarah Perry is here with tips for fighting back against the indoctrination. Then Pastor Ken Williams will close us out with his inspiring testimony and lead us in prayer for our country and the millions of people caught up in the grip of sexual deception. But first, how did we get to the point where celebrating sex and transgenderism became a 30-day event that rivals Christmas? We have a president who's flying the rainbow flag above US flag above the US flag at our embassies. A Democratic Congress that thinks the military should salute pride on base, and a White House that brags almost 14% of its 1500 appointees are LGBT. You can't blame people for wondering, when did we become identified by our sexual proclivities? The world is upside down when American pride is something we should apologize for but sexual perversion is the stuff of parades. Just a few decades ago, these activists said all they wanted was recognition, autonomy, coexistence. Now, a handful of years after Obergefell, it's not enough to leave them alone with their choices. They demand validation, affirmation, celebration. Pride is the new religion, and everyone must bow a knee to their sexual gods or face the left's fiery furnace. Corporate America has been happy to play along, plastering rainbows on tennis shoes, jean jackets, purses, watches, and cookware. There are transgender Oreos, rainbow Skittles, a gay Listerine, even drag queen burritos. Every logo in the universe is awash in red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. It's so over the top that you can't blame some reporters for saying enough Kellogg's a cereal brand has come out with a woke cereal. Yes, a woke cereal. This new cereal called Together with Pride features all the Kellogg cereal characters like Tony the Tiger and Toucan Sam on the box to promote Pride Month. Come on, man. The cereal is rainbow hearts covered in edible glitter. How nice. Give me a break. Here's the worst part. The cereal slogan too amazing to put into a box, and then lists a space for kids to write in their own pronouns. Seriously, whatever happened to box tops on cereal boxes, now you have pronoun spaces? The times certainly have changed. Suddenly, the people who didn't want anyone in their bedrooms now want their bedrooms on our breakfast tables. The trouble is, most Americans are sick of the rainbow barrage. They don't want their Cheerios preaching transgenderism or their cartoons training the woke. Even LGBT activists are complaining that the commercialization of June is nothing but empty pandering. Then there are others who see it as a path to something bigger, a society where no other views are tolerated. The fact that corporations are out here during Pride Month marketing to queer people and trans people, that's not wholly a bad thing. That is a symbol of our growing economic and political power. And then the question becomes, what do we do with that power? Do we simply want to be included in a fundamentally broken and unjust system? Or do we want to return to the roots of what people were fighting for at Stonewall and work to dismantle that system? The left imagines a world where Christians don't just feel like cultural exiles, we're made to be cultural exiles. But that's no excuse for us to throw up our hands and walk away, or worse, surrender the truth and become captive to the ways of the world. Believe me, I know what's happening in society today is upsetting and difficult to swallow. 
we have a front row seat right here in our nation's capital. But in this challenge lies the call to our generation, a cry to engage the lost like never before. While the rest of society shouts love is love, it's up to us to proclaim back God is love. And his love rejoices not in sin, but in truth. As for pride, well, that's a sin as old as mankind itself. And it's at the root of man's alienation from God. The Bible is very clear about how our arrogance will end if we don't repent. Proverbs tells us pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. The only thing we're told to boast in, Paul says, is our weakness, where God's power is made perfect. As Christians, we celebrate the colors of the rainbow, not as a symbol of pride, but as a reminder of God's mercy in response to man's self-destructive pride. We need to understand that loving our neighbor doesn't mean staying silent while they walk down a path of destruction. It means loving them enough to sometimes tell them the truth. It means telling them there's beauty and God's design and hope for every human being who is born with a sinful nature. As believers, we must be careful to never conflate love with affirmation. We can and should love everyone, but we can never affirm that which runs counter to God's word, to his truth, and to his design. At the end of the day, we can love God's way or we can try and love the world's way, but we can't do both. Conformity these days is easy. It's conviction that's hard. It demands that we lay down our fears of what others may say on Facebook or that Facebook may cancel us. Who knows, we might be canceled on Facebook before this program is over. If so, go to prayvotestand.org. Following Christ means we must die to our desire to be liked and affirmed or popular with others. And it requires that when we submit to God's word, we submit to all of it, not just the parts that the culture says are okay. Society wants us to live by the truth as they define it, which changes day by day. But for Christians, the truth doesn't change. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Tonight, we pray for the boldness to meet this moment head on and shine our light of truth in a very darkened world. May all of us who've rebelled against God in our own ways and experienced his forgiveness and grace learn to love as he has, without hesitation, and just as importantly, without compromise. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for our time together tonight. And Lord, our hearts are heavy and they are burdened for what we see happening in our nation as, Lord, it's as if a collective fist is being shaken in your face where pride is declared. Pride that represents something that runs counter to your word, to your truth, and to your design for mankind. Lord, we ask you to forgive us, to cleanse us. But Lord, I pray that you would give us a heart of compassion, but a heart of boldness and courage that we would speak the truth to a generation that desperately needs it. I pray tonight, Lord, that even those that may be catching this and not intentionally wanting to watch it, may be captivated by the truth, and may they be set free. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.